left-hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice, we have the Korean Protoss player. He is red, representing Alpha X. It is Zaun. And spawning here in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in that bottom left-hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice, we have a blue turn player representing the Cranky Ducklings. We have Vindicta. What? Uh, I pressed the wrong button. Oh! Uh, it is all good, and now Vindita has been able to warm up, but we were mentioning it earlier, Zaun did finish his own series quite quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if he was tuning in and having a bit of a gander at at least game number two of Vindicta vs. Mechanic. Yeah, it should definitely give him a little bit of an idea of what Vindicta wants to go for. Of course, it was a little bit of an unorthodox opening from Mechanic himself, but again, that doesn't necessarily have uh, much bearing of what Vindicta would like to do in this matchup. Yeah, exactly. The other, I guess, important thing to take note of is that all these players did have a bit of a, a bit of a heads up as to who was going to be in their groups ahead of time. They did have a week or so to prepare for their matchups and for this group stage. So I'm sure Vindita has been looking up and studying the VODs of Zaun um, quite adamantly to get out of this group in a really good standing. Likewise, I'm sure Zaun was doing the same to Vindicta. Yeah, I think both of them kind of knew that they were the favorite players in that in this particular group. So whoever wins this is just going to solidify that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They will be coming out first in this group. As a reminder, it is top two players making it out of this of these groups. Um, so there is still a chance for whoever loses this series to have a bit of a comeback. But of course, M Canning will, I'm sure, be waiting for them in that decider match. No, uh, nothing to say badly about Torque. Torque is an amazing player. He's actually an OG Cranky Ducklings member as well, uh, <laughs> if yeah. you remember. Um, but he isn't anywhere near as active as some of these other players. Yeah. There's definitely a reason why uh, I think most people are more familiar with M. Canning, Zaun, and Vindicta yeah. as opposed to Torque. Yeah, exactly. Again, exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at all of those groups yourself. Meanwhile, once again, a pretty standard opener here from Vindicta. He did open up with two of these Reapers. It was a double gas opener straight into that Hellion as well. Um, is expanding behind it, but looking to be aggressive with his first handful of units first. Yeah, once again, going to be looking to dive right in and get a full scout of what Zaun is planning to do, especially with that Twilight Council finishing up. Yeah, yeah, pretty standard here from Zaun, Twilight Council opener. You know, we have our natural shield battery on the way. We have a Stalker waiting on top of the ramp as well. We have the Adept waiting on top of the cliff face, the Reaper cliff face, I mean. And the Reapers are going to be able to slip on in. Oh, the Hellion does get into that mineral line. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I feel like Zaun, yeah, oh. definitely did his homework here. Not only was he already prepared with those adepts and, you know, very quick to react with his probes, he even got a shield battery just in case at that natural base. Vindicta is still able to go in, get a full scout, and takes out two probes for his trouble. So not too bad, but he doesn't get the follow-up here with the Robo facility. Yeah, he doesn't know how aggressive Zaun wants to be right now as Blink is going to be on the way. Again, a little bit unfortunate micro there uh, and pathing with that Hellion. It was kind of derping out, and because of that, I mean, there were a couple of weakened probes here. But could have had a little bit more damage done. Uh, unfortunately, it's not meant to be. Meanwhile, Zaun is going to waddle up this ramp. Is he going to shade first, or does he, is he going to get eyes up? Oh, oh, oh shade. Just a tad too late there. So it will get taken out, but at the very least, it will confirm to Zaun, hey, Vindicta's getting Widow Mines. I need to get ready for a potential mine drop. Exactly. So again, just like game number one against M. Canning, we saw the Reaper Hellion opener into these Widow Mines. The difference is that now we have a third Widow Mine instead from Vindicta. So he's going to have a little bit more firepower here. Oh, he's going to try and waddle one into the natural, actually. A bit of a ghetto multi-prong, but uh, I think I respect it, you know. <laughs> when you don't have a raven ready just yet, a uh, single widow mine waddling across the map, you know. It's kind of like a raven. Oh, meanwhile, here we go. We do have a blink on forward here. The medevac survives. It looks like one widow mine is going to get focused down. At the same time, the other is slowly making its way into the natural. Oh! oh. Oh, around on those probes. Was down too quick. Ugh. He was not too late to pull those probes. He was very quick to split off that one probe, however, and very quick to react with his blink as well when it's all said and done. Vindicta. 
Oh god, he uh oh no! Uh he does end up getting that damage done, but it looks like we have a little bit of latency here. Uh no. <laughs> it looks like my lovely co-caster is going to be leaving me for the time being. Feels bad, man. Um Game we're more than okay with continuing from here. Thankfully, there was no latency in the middle of an engagement or anything like that. And Yaku oh, wants back? Oh, oh, you're back. Oh my god, I thought we lost you forever. <laughs> am I back? Oh, I thought I was lost forever. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, Yaku. Of course, if the latency persists, uh, we can, of course, leave the game and, and maybe yep. I can, like, Discord stream or something like that, uh, if we can make that work. Uh, meanwhile, across the map, Zaun, he does have Link. He does have that prism. He's going to be making his way, looking to try and find a way in towards the main or even the natural of Vindicta. Yeah, definitely a little bit difficult to do here on Tropical Sacrifice. Again, there are two layers of defenses going on right here in the natural and the main base, but it also means that you can very quickly just blink around top of the main base. Yeah, exactly. Like here we so. go. We have a couple of stalkers going into the main base, picking up a couple of these workers. Tank is in position or is sieged up in the main, but isn't covering the mineral line. Yeah, and so a couple of SCVs will go down as a result of that. We will yeah. the Raven Vindicta. Yeah, we do have get Yeah, five SCVs are going to be going down. We have the Raven being set up to go for a little bit of a backstab here. Here we go, going to be slipping in towards the main base. At the same time, Zaun is still trying to split up the army of Vindicta. The tanks are nicely spread between the bases. Uh, the army as well, so Vindicta should be safe on these two uh, on these two bases. But we'll see how long it takes for him to expand and try and take a third. Yeah, that could definitely be the killing blow here for Zaun if he if Vindicta is able to take advantage of that right. Oh. Immediately, this drop gets spotted by the warp prism. Yeah, we'll see if Zan had eyes on it. it. Looks like he has, as the stalkers are making their way towards the bottom right hand corner. Vindita was trying to slip on by, and it looks like he'll be able to boost. But at the same time, mate, those stalkers are trying to hunt it down. They will miss us. Actually, go for a recall. Oh, so Zan definitely taking the safer option here by recalling all of those uh, stalkers. But it does mean that he has given up his map control at least temporarily. Yeah, he's also getting in position as well. Vinita has to be very careful with this drop, but at least this does relieve a bunch of pressure. The army has moved out. We did see a Nova going off here, only taking out a couple of these Marines. I'm um, only a couple, handful of Marines going down, and Vinita is pushing out across the map. Yeah, overall, not great, but not terrible either for Vindicta. If Sound is able to keep this disruptor alive, which he should be, then it'll be an overall... Uh, gain for him yeah exactly meanwhile at the same time it looks like you know the drop did not end up going down for vindicta he's going to try and find a way up this ramp uh but pushing up into disruptors is also is always a difficult thing to do zan opted to skip his uh skip his colossi meanwhile the drop does come into the natural base but an army is already here ready and waiting yeah the medevac does get dealt with pretty much immediately and this marines i mean they distract the army for a little bit but not for that long Anti-armor missile does go down. Zaun uh, doing a pretty good job of zoning out the army, but the Raven does get sniped. Yeah, the Raven goes down. We have an uh, we have an auditor being thrown down in a bit of a panic there, but there's just so much Protoss. I don't know if there's enough fire to really press on forward. We do have two tanks in the back line, but the disruptors are getting ready to shoot out once again. Yeah, the very least able to take out a widow mine. Oh. And it's uh, like that Colossus. Oh, unfortunate timing there for Vindicta. Uh, that Colossus is on the way. Yeah, the Colossi is on the way. We're going to be seeing, seeing a full surrounder collapse on the army of Vindicta, and there's just too much here. Widowmines are going to be going off, but the tanks have been completely shut down. Yeah, the tanks immediately get engulfed by those zealots. The bio isn't too far behind all of that. GG is called, and Zaun will be taking game number one. Yeah, exactly. That was a very committed push there from Vindicta. He was taking a third base on the location behind it, but it was more of an afterthought than anything. He had to trade a little bit more efficiently there. And Zaun was doing such a great job at preserving his high-tech units, preserving his disruptors, preserving his uh, eventually colossi once they were coming out. Um, and yeah, yeah, very, very great defense there. Also, uh, it was really cool yeah. to see him react to that drop uh, the way that he did. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that was some very... Very solid reactive play coming out from Zano. I'm glad that <laughs> these players have their names at the bottom of the list uh, yeah. alphabetically because these players are eager. They want to jump in and they want to immediately get 
into their game. I cannot blame them one bit. We had, but we need to settle the logo spot, guys. Please. Yeah, we had literally like three <laughs> seconds to quickly <laughs> set up the logos mod, and we were able to do so just in time. Uh, and we are going to be featuring a new map uh, for the first time in today's broadcast. We're going to be dancing in the moonlight. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I guess you can't really dance on the moon. Uh, gravity gets in the way. But we are, in fact, going to be doing just that here on Moon Dance. We're, of course, in the bottom right-hand corner map, spotting all the way in the bottom right-hand corner. We have our red Protoss player already up one game in this best of three decider match. He's going to be representing Alpha X. He is Zao. And spawning in the top left hand corner of Moondance, we have the American Terran player representing the Cranky Ducklings. Currently down in this series, but not out. Not yet. It is Vindicta. A man of many, many builds. You gotta know he's been... You gotta know he's been theory crafting a bit with Dolan. <laughs> he definitely has as a reminder dolan and world team league was able to take a game from zound they did end up going one to one could have been a two oh if dolan was smudging a little bit after that series um but yeah we'll see how vindicta approaches this a very different map compared to tropical sacrifice tropical sacrifice being one of the largest maps in the map pool this one moon dance having the shortest rush distance the shortest rush distance in the map pool yeah it's not a tiny, tiny map, but like you said, Rush Distance is just a straight line that goes across horizontally on the map. You'll love to see a little bit of an NG block here coming down just to try to lay the Protoss player, but I have to wonder if that's as effective on Moon Dance because, of course, there is that pocket base. That sounds going immediately for. Yeah, here we go. Zaun takes the unnatural, natural feels Zerg man. Vindita just confirming and making sure that it is there. Immediately cancels his engineering bait as well to get a refund on those minerals. So a very peculiar opener. Um, but it does make a lot of sense because of the progression of that NG bait. Because it took so long to get eyes on. Zaun doesn't want to delay his Nexus any longer. Yeah, it definitely affects the opening by a little bit. Again, these... Minerals don't have that much, or there aren't that many mineral patches in this pocket base compared to a regular base, but like uh -huh. I said, it would have been way worse if he tried to delay his Nexus and get it on the natural base. Maven, this is being so annoying this game. <laughs> he forces you on natural, natural, and he throws down a bunker as well, and because of the RNG Zan, it looks like this bunker should finish, and he's already getting ready for it. He's forced to throw down a shield battery here in the natural. More wasted resources. Oh, oh the adapt! Ooh. Can it? Will take out the bunker in time. But of course, that just gets cancelled, and yeah, Vindicta just goes for a full scout into the main oh. base instead. Yeah, or exactly. does he? Yeah, he he does. does. There we go. He gets eyes on the Twilight Council. The Reaper is going to go down. This could have been a lot worse. There could have been a lot, a lot more lost mining time at the natural base. I'm not sure too much, though, because we do have already have a shield battery done. But again, wasted resources here for Zaun, and Vindicta does at least get that scout on. Yeah, doesn't quite get the follow-up with the Stargate. Or does oh. he? Wait, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure what he saw. Actually, it's Initially, it was a Twilight Council, but I think Zalan cancelled and threw down Stargate instead. Wait, am I am I seeing things? It was a Twilight Council first, right? It was, I, I saw a Twilight Council. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Unless we have a shared psychosis. It's possible. We, we, our brains could be merged in that way. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past us. But yes, it looks like he cancelled. He's going for a Stargate first, followed by a Twilight Council. And this is going to be pretty huge here. Vindicta, is he going to be prepared? Because his Marines are going to be moving out. His oh. Cyclone moves out as well. He's not going to have much of anything to protect this mineral line. Yeah, the one silver lining here for Vindicta, I guess, is that Zaun is going for Phoenixes rather rather than Oracle, so it yeah. will take him a little bit longer to set up his harass, but like you said, Vindicta's just completely defenseless back home. He doesn't I... even need to be, or rather, Zaun doesn't even need to go across the map right now. He can just lift up this uh, Cyclone and take out the entire Terran army. He really could. And meanwhile, Vindicta, he does take out a probe. He, the block on is broken. He does finally get eyes on that Phoenix as it does CC that Cyclone. Oof. Immediately lifted and at the mercy of these stalkers. All of the units are in position just to take advantage of the cyclone as it lands. And Zaun has had a very fantastic defensive opening so far. Yeah, Zaun just completely, 
completely reading Vindicta like a book. Again, Vindicta had no idea that there was going to be a Phoenix ready and waiting for him, so he just lost everything. Losing that first Cyclone is huge. He is transitioning. He's trying to get a Viking out right now. He's even got Cloak on the way, but this is scattered by Zaun. And this is in the fake out research. It is. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, my God. He's trying to force a reaction out of Zaun. And meanwhile, here we go. Vindicta trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these handful of Gable units. But once again, the Cyclone gets CC'd. Yeah, the Graviton Pull. Graviton Pull? That's not a name of it. The Lift from yeah. the Phoenix does get broken. So at the very least, Vindicta is able to keep his Cyclone alive. But now we got three Phoenixes. That's enough to be annoying in the mineral line. Yeah, it really is. We do have another Marine getting picked off. At least the SCVs have been able to survive. Only two going down. Looks like there's enough anti-air here for Vindicta to just zone away these Phoenixes, but he is forced to throw down his third base on location. Uh, any kind of timing that he wanted to hit earlier, he just isn't going to hit because he's lost so much already. Yeah, Vindicta, he loves to go aggressive in this matchup. He likes to push out on two oh. bases, get some kind of economic damage, and then expand from there. But this game, he's just been completely neutered. He really has. At least he was able to pick off one of those Phoenixes uh, of Zound. So it could have been a lot a lot worse here for Vindicta. Um, but again, like a lot of the wind has been taken out of his sails. Like he's still struggling to at least get back into this mid game. You know, we have a third base on the way. Now the rest of our production, we still don't have Stim or anything like that. So Zound has a lot of freedom. And with that freedom, we can see he is working on his upgrades. He's already getting fully saturated on three bases. Like his probe can is insane. And that's terrifying right now. Mm -hmm. If you're a Terran player, Vindicta knows he needs to get something done, which is why he is playing as aggressive as he's being right now. Lisa's <laughs> Wart does not get activated just yet. Just not the tank, no! Uh... Arguably yeah, the most backbone taken out of this army. Yeah, arguably the most important part of this push does get taken out. We do have the Phoenixes kind of like perusing that location, gonna wanna pick it up whenever they can. One Phoenix will go down. And Zaun is just kind of biding his time here. He knows that the bunkers are in production, but he just wants to wait a little while and get the rest of his army, maybe finish up another shield battery or two before pushing in. Here comes that push in as we were waiting on. Yeah, exactly. Once again, the tank is just not able to siege up here. The Zelts are getting top of these Marines as well. We do see the couple of reinforcements coming in, but the Zelts are just too much. Yeah, and these are slow lots, by the way. GG is called Zaun.